In this video, we're going to build a login and registration system in Dino. Let's have a look at the working demo. So we have this amazing homepage welcome with login and register buttons. When we click the register button, we can actually register. I'm going to specify my name, the username and password. Then I'm registered and now I can log in with the username I gave. So when I'm authorized, I see right here the name of the user, which, which I gave during the registration. And I have this logout button and I have click here to see protected page. When I click, I see that the URL is slash protected and this page is only available for authorized users. If I go back and click this logout button and I'm not authorized anymore and I try to access this protected URL, I'm redirected to the login page. We're going to implement the whole thing from absolutely scratch and we're going to use the following features. We're going to write in TypeScript and use all the TypeScript great features. Don't worry if you're new to TypeScript. It's not complicated and I'm going to explain every detail. We're going to use JW tokens for authentication. We're going to use templating engine to render the views. We're going to bcrypt our password and we're going to use dot env package for environment variables and all of these from scratch. The only thing which I'm not going to implement is saving users in some persistent storage like MongoDB. In one of my previous videos, I made a REST API with Dino and MongoDB. And if you want to connect this into MongoDB, you can check out the video. I will put the link in the description. That's all what we're going to build. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe and the bell buttons and let's start. Hello guys, what's up? The Code Talk is here and welcome to my channel. On this channel, I do coding tutorials and challenges. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. The code what we are going to write in this video is available on my GitHub account. You can find the link in the description. You can check out, you can experiment with it and give it a star if you like. Okay, let's open my VS Code and let's start from scratch. So first of all, I'm going to create file server.ts. This is this will be the main file which I'm going to execute in Dino. So then I'm going to go to dino.land official website and go to third party modules. Generally, when I create some applications using Dino, I have my documentation, the Dino documentation opened. So I need to start with Oak framework. OK, so this is the framework I want to start. And I want to import basically from this framework, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, this is, this is the master branch and generally importing things from the master branch is not a good idea. Okay. So I'm going to switch to the latest version. And I actually had a problem when I uh, previously already had imported things from the master branch and Dino caches every import basically from the URL and then I had a problem because the master branch was updated. There were some new features, but the Dino cached the previous version and it couldn't just see the new features. OK, so if you are importing this master branch, if you previously have imported things from the master branch on any package, it really doesn't matter. Make sure you run your Dino command with dash dash reload. OK, I'm going to show this to you. But for now, I'm going to switch to the latest version, which is 5.0.0. I'm going to copy the following URL and go to the server and import a couple of things right here. So I'm going to import um, application and rotor from the following link slash mod.ts. OK. So this is the URL from which I want to import. Then I'm going to create an instance of the application and instance of rotor. OK, then I'm going to tell the application to use rotor roads and to use rotor 
and load methods. Then I'm going to call up listen, give it a port number, 8000, and let's just print console log statement to make sure that server is up and running. Server started on port 8000. Okay, awesome. Now we need to configure actual roles of the router, right? So I'm going to write router dot get whenever get request is made on slash endpoint. I'm going to call some function. So the second argument is some function. So I'm going to specify right here a function name which I will create. Okay, home. So this is the home page I want to specify. Okay, but this home function doesn't exist. Let's create in another file called it roads uh, roads .ts. and from here I want to export const export uh, excuse me export const home is a function which accepts context right there okay and because we are using TypeScript we can use its features and I'm going to specify right here what is the actual type of this context okay by the way I ctx okay let's let's call it correctly and this will be a rotor context okay this will be rotor context and we need to import this rotor context from the following URL from where basically we imported this application okay so let's copy let's paste right here okay and let's import rotor context okay we don't want rotor we just want rotor context. Awesome. And this rotor context has a response right there. And let's set response body will be welcome. Okay. Let's do it like this. So we have this home and we have the, we need to import this home right here. So import home from roads, double quotas roads.ts okay just like this save and now let's start the server so open the terminal and run dino run dash dash net server.ts hit the enter it compiles the typescript into javascript and executes this behind and we see right here a problem address in use my bed i have previously started this one so Let's restart it. Okay, server is started on port 8000. Let's open in the browser. Localhost port 8000. And right here we see this welcome, which comes from the roads. Okay, awesome. Now we can already configure some other things. But for now, let's actually implement the views. So we need to have views. For this, I'm going to use I'm going to go to third-party modules again and right here I'm going to use DEJS template engine for Dino. Again, I'm going to switch to the latest version. I don't want to import things on master. That's not good practice. Okay, copy the following URL and import some things from this URL. Let's go to roads and import some things from the following URL. Okay mod.ts okay but what we need to import let's have a look at the documentation right here this method this package has a couple of methods render file render render file as to string render to string and so on so what we want is render file to string okay i'm going to copy this method and import from this mod.ts okay and what this does basically it accepts a view file path and returns the render string okay it returns actually promise so we need to await on this so let me show this to you so render file to string we're going to specify uh string interpolation right here and i'm going to specify dino current working directory from the current working di directory we're gonna go to views folder and from views folder i'm gonna render home dot ejs 
okay? And this render file to string accepts second argument an object of parameters. If you don't have any parameters to pass, we just still need to pass an empty object right here. Otherwise, it will throw an error. Okay, so this is what we need to do. But we don't have this views home EJS. Okay, so let's go to project, create folder views. And inside the views, I'm going to create home.ejs. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. And this is just an HTML. So I'm going to simply copy and paste the some things right here okay here is the html let's have a look it's very simple html i'm just including bootstrap css from the cdn giving a padding 50 pixel to body and we have container with max width welcome text and two buttons that's it okay this is all in this home home ejs so let's save this and let's have a look in the um Let's go basically into roads and let's write here await. Okay, so this one, this render file to string returns a promise and we need to await, we need to wait and just wrap out this promise. So we need async keyword right here. And let's save this and let's start the server. We need to restart the server basically every time we make some changes in the code. Okay, so server is started let's go to the browser refresh it and we have internal server error and basically this internal server error comes because the, we are reading the file and we haven't given the read permission to the server but sometimes with the dino throws this internal server error but we actually don't see what's the actual reason now i know that this error comes because we haven't specified this uh hello read so i'm going to specify right here dash dash hello read okay and we we can see that it actually will work right now here it is but if we just don't know that this is because hello read we need some way to see what's the error okay and i'm gonna show this to you right now so Let's restart the server again. We will have this internal server error. And let's go to the server. And right here, I'm going to configure the application to listen on e on error. On application, I'm going to call add event listener method. And whenever error is happening, so we have event right here. And I'm going to print console.log event error. Okay, this will print the message. Let's restart the server and just reload in the browser. We have internal server error in the browser. However, if we look in the terminal right here, we see error. What is the actual reason? Permission denied read access to run again with dash dash hello read. So it now tells us exactly what we need to do. Okay, and this happens because we added the event listener on the application and we're printing the error. Okay, awesome. So now let's actually run this with dash dash hello read. The server is started and we see right here, welcome. Okay, now we need to implement login and registration. Right now they are not implemented. Okay, now let's go to the server and right here we can configure the uh, different URLs as well. Okay, I'm gonna now copy and paste this get a couple of times, okay? Get slash login, we're gonna call login function, which we don't yet have, okay? Slash register, we're gonna call another function, register. Right here, we will have uh, protected, one will be protected URL, protected, uh, I'm gonna call it protected road, because protected, just protected is a keyword, okay? And we're going to handle, of course, post requests. Whenever post request is made on slash login, we're going to create a function post login. Okay. And duplicate this one. And whenever post request is made on register, we're going to call the function post register. And one more function, this will be get. Whenever we are making a get request on logout, we're going to call logout method okay now we need to declare all these methods in a roads file 
Okay, so let's go to the roads and right here, I'm going to copy and paste these few more times and just change a couple of things right here. Okay, so on login, we're going to render the login EJS. On register, we're going to render uh, register EJS and we're going to create this. On protected, we're going to render protected. Uh, protected road. Let's call the function actually protected road because we are using with this name in the server.ts, but the the name of the view file can be just protected. Okay. And then we have right here post login. And right here we have post register. And one more function will be logout. Okay. We have all of these functions. Of course, we need to implement the actual uh, body of these functions, but we have all these functions and we have home twice. So we don't want this one. Now let's go and actually implement a login and register. Okay. Login dot EJS. And let's create second function register dot EJS. Let's also create protected protected dot EJS. Okay. So in this tutorial, I want to fully focus on the login and registration implementations. So I'm just going to uh, copy and paste the content of this uh, login and register and protect it. Okay, so here is the uh, login EJS content. So very simple. Again, the same uh, boilerplate code. We have container with login form, which submits with method post on slash login. We have username. We have password, we have submit button and link to the create new account to the register page. Nothing else, nothing specific. Again, because in this tutorial, I want to fully focus on login and registration. I'm not going to even create partial files and move this header and footer in, into partial files. Uh, I plan to create a separate video to make a separate video about roles and uh, about views and layouts. And probably while you are watching this video, I have already made this tutorial. So check out the video description. Maybe you can find their uh, video about roads and layouts using uh, DEJS in Dino. Okay, so this is the whole login form. Now I'm going to copy and paste register registration form. So let's go to register, paste right here. The, the similar HTML, nothing specific, just HTML. Okay, and in the protected, I'm also going to copy and paste. It's even simpler. We have just a single H3 tag. Okay. Nothing, nothing specific. Okay. So now we have all these pages and we can actually test um, going to the login page. Okay. Let's restart the server. Let's go to the browser and refresh it. Okay. Server probably was crashed. Let's have a look. Okay, cannot find name road. Okay, it's my bad. So we created uh, these, we are using these functions, but we are, we don't actually import from the roads. Okay, so we need to import login. We need to import register. We need to import protected. Post login. Post register. Um, logout. Okay, we need to import all of this. Okay, probably right here we have some mistake. Protected rotor and protected road. It should be called protected road. Okay, so let's change this and let's go to the roads and change this into protected road as well. Okay, we don't see any errors anymore. Let's start the server. Let's wait and to see that server is up and running. Okay, so we started. Let's reload the browser. Let's go to the register. This is the registration page. Click here. We are on the login page. Awesome. Now we can already focus on the implementation of a register. Okay, so whenever we fill up the form, hit the register button, we want to take out the submitted data. So let's go to the rotor, roads, excuse me, and let's go to post register right here. Okay, so I'm going to... Um, right here. Okay, let's remove this whole thing right here. And we want to take out the submitted data. Okay, we have context variable. And because we are using TypeScript, we can use all the great features the TypeScript gives us. Okay, like autocompletion, for example. Okay, context has request. And the request has body. Okay, so I'm going to call body function. 
Okay, and this one returns a promise. So I need to write a wait in front of it. And finally, this returns an object. And I want to print this object. Okay, so const, let's call it some data or let's call it body equals await whatever it is. And I want to print the whole body. Okay, let's save this and let's restart the server. Go to the browser and fill up the form. And hit the enter. The form was probably submitted. And right here we see this type is form and value is a URL search params implementation. Okay, so depending on how we submit the form, if it's an application JSON type, then we have an object. If it's a type of form, because we're submitting the form, we have a form URL encoded uh, content type. In this case, we have this URL search params implementation. Okay, and from this, we need to take out this Basically, we need to take out the value. Let's have a look again. We need to take out the value. Okay, so I want to destructure this and take out the value and call get method on the value. Okay, so value has method get and we need to specify the key. And this key is the name of the input field. And right here in the registration, we gave name, username and password. Okay, we want to take out these all these three values name and let's assign this into a constant name okay and just duplicate this couple of times right here we have username and right here we have password okay so we have all these three three fields and we can print them okay name username and password awesome let's restart the server and reload in the browser let's have a look in the terminal right here we see zura three times that's because i gave name username and password the same thing but it works so we got the data now we need to actually save this data in the users array okay so for this let's create an array of users so i'm gonna go to the project and create new file uh, outside right here users.ts and here i'm going to create an interface again i'm using typescript features and i'm going to explain this right now the interface basically is a type so i'm creating new type of the user and this new type will have name to be string username to be string and password to be string as well okay and from here, I want to also export a constant users, which needs to be, which must be an array of my user interface. Okay, and this equals to an array and just like this. So we are e exporting constant users and interface user from this users.ts. Now let's go to the roads and right here, we need to import this users array import users from users.ts okay so we are importing this users array from this users.ts and right here i want to call push on these users okay a users dot push and we need to put right here a just created user we just need to create user constant user equals an object okay and this object needs to be pushed right here and this user needs to have name which will be the name what we take out from this uh, form okay name username and we need to specify right here password but we don't want to save plain password that's not secure we want to save the hashed password okay so for this i'm going to use bcrypt module uh, of dino okay let's go to third party modules again and right here i'm going to type bcrypt just click on this and i want to use this package again i'm going to switch to the latest version which is this one copy the following url go to the uh, roads and import import couple of things from the following url okay slash mod.ts okay but what we need to import from here 
So let's have a look at the documentation right here. This bcrypt has a couple of functions, okay? Like hash, compare, hash sync, compare sync, and we have right here just hash and compare. And according to the documentation, the hash and compare, which are just asynchronous functions, so they require to specify, let's read this, the async implementation requires web workers which require Elonet to import Dino standard modules from inside the worker, also Elo crypto inside the web worker. You will need to use dash dash unstable flag 2. Okay? And right here it's written clearly running in sync requires no permission, running in async functionality requires Elonet and unstable. Okay, so let's use the sync version because anyway we're gonna put a wait in front of it. Okay, so let's let's use this hash sync and compare sync functions. So I'm gonna import now hash hash sync from the following URL and use this hash sync right here. Okay, let's create a variable const hashed password equals let's call hash sync and specify plain password. Okay, so this will take the plain password, create its hashed version, and right here, password corresponds to hashed password. Okay, now we created the user and pushed this user in this user's array, which is awesome, which is exactly what we wanted to do. But when we do this, this means that the user is actually already successfully created. And now we need to redirect user to the login page so that the user can log in. So for this, I'm going to use context response redirect method. Okay. And I'm going to specify right here slash login. Okay. Let's remove this console log statement and have a look. So we take out the whole body. We take out the name, username, and password, created hashed password, created the user object, pushed this user object in the user's array and redirected to the login. Okay, we can test this right now that this actually works and we can print the whole users. And if there will be this inserted user, it proves that this actually works, but let's actually implement login as well. Okay, so let's go to the login and then we can test both of them, registration and login at the same time. Okay, so let's delete this line right here. And we need to take out this body and take out the username and password. So I'm going to copy the following lines. So, and we need to take out the username and password only. Okay. And after this, we need to actually search the user from this user's, uh, user's array. Okay. So now I'm going to call users find. Okay. Right here, we accept a variable and I'm going to specify right here, uh, actually, let me show you that without specification how this works. Okay, so right here we accept a user, and if the user username equals to the username, okay, then this returns an object const user equals to this one. Okay, so we are actually searching the user, but because I'm using TypeScript, I can actually specify right here that this U is an interface of user okay and this user must be imported right here okay so before i continue uh, there is a new extension of vs code uh, for dino okay so this is more official extension so if you go to extensions and click the uh, type the dino right here so we have this old one which is now deprecated and this is the more official one okay from dino land so install the following extension if you if you don't have it. It's it's great. Uh, okay, so now we try to find the user by username and we need to also handle errors. Okay, if user was not found, what we do. So let's just type if user was not found, then we need to render the login page, but with some sort of error. Okay, that the username, for example, uh, is not correct. Okay, so right here, we need to render the login page with an error. So how do we render a login page? Right here, we have the rendering of login page. Okay, so we need to do the same thing. Okay, but we need to now pass a variable right here in this object. Right now, we don't pass any parameters, but we need to pass right here 
an error okay so error will be sim simple um, incorrect username okay so if the user is not found we show this one then what happens uh, and we need to of course handle this error displaying in this login ejs but i will get back to this really soon so what happens if the user is found okay else if the user is found then we need to compare the user's password into the password which we use for registration okay so for this i'm going to use i'm going to import compare sync from this pcrypt okay and how this compare sync works basically this compare sync accepts two arguments first one is the plain plain password what we received from post okay the password the second argument is the hash and the hash is the user dot password okay uh my bad password okay so this is the hash we actually generated when we created new user okay and if the compare returns false right here let's put the exclamation mark if the compare returns false again we need to render the login form with some sort of error incorrect password in this case okay else space if and if the compare password returns true which means that the password was entered correctly we need to now actually log in the user and how we're going to do this i'm going to get back now to this login user uh, later so let's just print right here console log statement uh, success okay let's do like this and let's take care of a couple of things right here first of all because we are using typescript right here we have an error okay argument of type string is not assignable to parameter of type string so that's that's a strange thing why this happens because we're using typescript uh, it cannot really understand if we open this compare sync okay this is the function right here it accepts string as a lowercase okay but we are actually passing uppercase string and how typescript knows about this okay because we are using right here a users array okay and each individual user if we go to the um, users let me close the views okay and go to the users right here we have this password to be uppercase string okay and because we are finding user okay this user needs to be an uh, instance of the interface let's say like this type of interface and the password is uppercase string okay so we can change this just into lowercase string okay and now this should be okay okay so we can actually change everything into into lowercase string it's for it, it really doesn't matter if it's lowercase and uppercase in this particular case okay so let's save this and now let's have a look so we we implemented registration we implemented login and let's now open terminal stop and start it let's go to the browser and let's reload the page and when we reload it resubmits on the registration endpoint and we should redirect yeah we are redirected to the login page and let's have a look in the console and right here we see the user okay name is zura username is zura and password is encrypted okay so it's it's just encrypted for uh for security again we are not going to implement saving the actual users in the database I made a video about uh, REST a building REST API using Dino and MongoDB. And if you want to save the users in the MongoDB database, check out the video. I'll put the, in the link in the description. Okay, awesome. Now, as we implemented the registration, we need to test how the login works. Okay, so let's go to the um, browser and try to log in with just incorrect username. Okay, let's try to, in uh, to log in with incorrect username hit this login button and nothing actually happens simply because when we enter the incorrect username this code is executed and the same login form is uh, rendered and we pass error but we don't actually use this error in this login form okay the same thing happens if we enter the correct username but incorrect password let's actually test right now the correct username and password we should see success in the console right here okay hit the login 
and right here we see success, which is awesome. Now let's first implement displaying of errors. Let's go to the login EJS right here, and we need to implement these errors. So we can do it. Uh, we can do it easily. So right here we just need to check if the error was received. Okay. So I'm going to write an if statement. So um, because we are using this DEJS, we need to use its templating syntax. Okay. Less than percent if error percent greater than and right here we need curly brace as well okay so this is the opening um, this is basically an if statement and right here we need ending curly brace of this uh, if statement just like this okay if error was received we need to render let's render uh, bootstrap alert okay alert alert danger and this bootstrap alert, if you don't know, it's just a uh, classes which gives it a uh, color of red. Okay, so let's output right here error. For outputting, we are using again less than person sign and equal right here. Okay, so if error exists, we are rendering this div with alert classes and the actual error. Okay, and let's actually see how this works. So let's open the login. I think the server is crashed. Yes, error is not defined. And this basically happens because when we render the login form from this login method, we don't pass any variables right there. The error is not passed and we put this error in the if statement and we have this error. Error is not defined. Okay, so what we need to do right here, pass an empty variable of error or just false okay error is false this makes sure that we, we are making sure that the error variable itself is defined and is false okay when we just try to render the login form this if statement won't be satisfied because error is false okay let's start the server and open the login page in the browser okay we see this login so if we just type incorrect username and password hit the enter we see this incorrect username if type correct username but incorrect password i see uh, still incorrect username um, this this uh, simply happens because whenever we restart the server this users array where we are saving the users is basically resetted so every time it's an empty so every time we restart the server we need to create new user okay because we are not using mongodb so let's create a new account i'm going to quickly do this okay hit the enter user is registered now i type correct username but incorrect password and right here i see incorrect password okay and if i type correct username and correct password i see in the terminal right here uh where is it success Okay, and in this success stage, now we need to implement the generating JW token and putting in the cookie. Okay, awesome. Let's go to the roads, post login, and right here we need to implement now JW token. For this, I'm going to open DinoLand third party packages again. And right here, I'm going to search for DJWT. This is the package we are going to use. Switch to the latest version, copy the URL, and import some things right here. Import, let me collapse the left side. Import a couple of things from the following URL, mod.ts. Okay, but what we need to import? Let's have a look at the documentation. Okay, how this generally works. Scroll down, and right here, we need a couple of things. We need key. And this key needs to be some secret key using which we're going to uh, sign our payload and header. Okay, we need payload, we need key, and we need header. We need to also have this key on a secure place. Okay, so let's implement this right now and improve step by step. So we need this header, so I'm going to copy this header, okay, and paste right here. And right here, it says that the header, the type of the header is JOS. So I'm going to import uh, the JOS as 
the this this is written right here okay so we're going to actually import from this create so i'm going to copy this and we don't want to import from mod ts actually it's, it, it was my mistake okay we're going to import from this create dot ts and we have this uh, joes right here we need this make jwt and we need key and payload however let me let me actually import this key and i'm going to call this uh you, th this basically should be a random a unique secret key as long as uh, as long it is basically as secure your, your uh, encryption will be uh, you don't want of course to make it thousands of characters of long but it should be some random string okay so we have this key and header and down below whenever we print the success i want to call make jwt function okay this creates a jw token and we need to specify key right here we need to specify header and we need to specify payload and what is this payload the payload is an object which has a couple of properties and one of them is issuer so this iss is basically an issuer and the issuer is the user who is basically uh in this case in our case it will be user who will be uh authorized okay so i'm going to copy this payload creates an instance right here constant payload and the issuer will be user dot username okay so this is the username who will be logged in and as for the expiration date this will i'm going to set this into one hour okay so 1000 which is one second multiplied on 60 and this one multiplied on 60 again okay whenever the jw token will be expired basically when the user will be logged in uh, the session will be valid for one hour okay after one hour the session will expire okay so let's save this and i'm going to specify right here payload as well okay so this creates jw token and what happens so we have this jw token right here as a string okay so we need to take this jw token so i'm going to create a variable jwt equals this one and i want to take this jw token and set inside the cookie okay context has access into cookies as well okay context cookies set jwt corresponds to jwt variable and when we set this in the cookies we need to redirect user to the login page okay context response redirect uh excuse me not the login page but on the home page okay so we we log in the user we put this jw token in the cookie and we redirect user to the home page now let's open the browser first of all we need to restart the server and when we do this we need to register again so let's go to the register page create new account and let's now try to log in okay so hit the login and we are redirected to the login page and let's open now cookies and let's have a look application cookies and right here we see this jwt name corresponds to some long value this is the jw token okay and because we set this in the cookies now we need to tell the application and if this is in the cookies the user is basically authorized okay now i'm going to implement user middleware okay so let's create a ver uh, the file user middleware.ts okay so this will be a function okay export default const user middleware corresponds to a function and actually i need to first create constant user middleware and then export default user middleware just like this um, user middleware okay and this function will be used now in the server.ts okay before i declare a route right here i'm going to specify app use okay i'm telling the application to always use this user middleware okay and this was imported automatically and the syntax basically of this function the signature of this function is the same as each route so it accepts right there context 
which needs to be either rotor context, but in this case, it will be just a context, okay? Uh, the instance of the context. And we need to import this con context from the, uh, from the Oak framework as well. So let's copy the following URL, go to the user middleware and import context from here, okay? So we have context. Uh, as a first argument and the second argument will be next which will be a function okay again because we are using typescript we can specify that this next is a function okay we have this user middleware and now what to do so this is what we're going to do we're going to read the cookies take out the jw token and validate the jw token if it's a valid and not expired and not modified then we are going to uh, decrypt this, of course, take out the issuer, the user basically we put right there. Okay, let's go to the login. And right here we put this ish issuer, the current user. Okay, right here we will take this current username. Then we will make a query. If this would be a MongoDB database, we would make a query in the database. But because we are using an array, we will find the user by the username in this array and then save this user in the application context state okay so that this current user which is currently authorized is available for basically anywhere from this application okay sounds good okay let's do it so first of all let's access context cookies and get the jw token okay jwt okay and we can save this in a jwt variable Okay, then we need to check if the JW token doesn't exist, we basically don't do anything, okay? So let's do like this. If it exists, then we do some things. But if it doesn't exist, um, we just simply call next, okay? Let's put await. Await next. We are calling this um, next function. Because we are using await right here, we need to specify async right here. By the way, uh, I found some questions on the internet, even people asked me, uh, I thought we didn't need to use async keyword in the uh, Dino because await works without async. Actually, that's not like this. We, you can use await um, in the top level uh, scope, okay? But whenever you're using await in a function, this function must be async function, okay? So again, we're using this next right here. If the JW token exists, and right here we need to call this validate JWT method. Okay, let's have a look at the JWT documentation. Right here we have this validate JWT, and this needs to be imported from the following URL. Okay, I'm going to copy this and import right here validate JWT and call this validate JWT right here. Okay, and we're going to specify a couple of uh, basically, we're going to specify um, three arguments right here, according to what's written also right here, okay? JWT, the key, and some sort of object, okay? The first argument is JW token. The second is key, and that should be the same key we used in encryption, okay? This key was used, this key was used when we encrypted this JW token, okay? So, now we need to access this key as well. In the real applications, generally, this key should be should not be committed. You should never commit this, and it should be in environment variables, okay, in .env file. So now I'm going to uh, install this .env package as well, okay, and put this in an environment variables. Let's go to the Deno third-party packages again, and right here I'm going to type .env. Okay, so we have a couple of dot .env implementations and I think the last one is what we want. Okay, this one. And we have a couple of options. We can either import config from the following URL and call config or we can just import the URL just like this and then when we can access the environment variables using deno, deno.env.get to get some variable. Okay, so I'm going to use the following approach. Okay, so import just like this. Okay, and I need to do this right here in the roads 
and I need to also uh, change this. Um, I need to do this in two places basically in the roles and change how we get this key and in the user middleware as well. Okay, so let's do this first in the user middleware. Okay, so right here I'm going to run this code actually because we we need to use this uh, just one time better if this will be in the server. Okay, so let's go to the server.ts and import the following URL and this gives us possibility to access the environment variables using the following approach dino env get okay get and whatever will be our key and we need to create of course this uh, dot env file dot env and right here i'm going to specify jwt underscore key corresponds to some key and i'm going to use the same key your secret okay this one so this is the secret key. Again, this should be a random unique string, um, non-guessable string, but for now we can leave it as it is. And now in the JW, um, in this user middleware, we need to specify JWT underscore key. Okay. And we're going to also specify the third argument, which will be is throwing, which will be an object and is throwing is false. What is this basically doing that without this object if the function was was not able to decode this jw token it will throw an error and i'm telling that hey don't throw an, throw an error and instead return null okay and const data equals to this one but with await okay this returns a promise and we need await in front of it and finally this returns either decoded uh, object of this token or null and right here we have an error this this is a TypeScript error and we need to specify this error basically happens because this dino.env.get might return an undefined okay and this one validate JW token always accepts string as a second argument and where we can specify an undefined what we need to do right here specify or empty string okay so if this returns an undefined it will just pass empty string right here okay and now right here we have this decoded version of the user okay this data and we can print this whole data right here as well and see what it is uh, and let's actually change how we use this key right here as well okay we don't want key just like this instead we need to scroll down come right here and when we make jw token the key needs to be dino.env get jwt underscore key okay just like this or empty string okay so now we save this we have this dot env uh, file and this should work okay so Okay, we have this console log statement right here. Now let's save this and restart the server. Okay, it downloaded things from this .env package. Let's wait. Okay, we have an error, permission denied. We need to run it with lo dash dash lo env. Because we are gonna read the environment variables and put some things there, we need to run this with dash dash lo env. Okay, lo env hit the enter the server was started now let's open in the browser let's go to the register page let's close this actually so zura 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 hit the enter now let's try to log in hit the enter okay it worked let's have a look in the terminal right now so now what happens so we have something right here and that something is the data okay so whenever i refresh the page this middleware is uh, middleware function is called okay application is using and it's called on every request and right here we have this data so actually it was uh, the the validate JWT successfully decoded and we have header payload and signature so what we need to take out from here is payload okay data has payload we can write an if statement if data was not if data was successfully decoded we we can continue otherwise if data was not successfully decoded 
this means that in the cookies we have invalid JW token. Okay, so we need to call context cookies delete. Okay, in cookies we have invalid JW token, so we just we can just delete this, and the user is obviously not authorized. Okay, awesome. However, if the data was successfully decoded, we need to now find the user. Const user equals users find, and right here we need to specify u is a, has a type of user, and use username equals to data payload issuer, ISS, okay? So this is the username from using which we need to search the user, okay? And right here we have an error, property payload undefined. Okay, it, it might be undefined. Um, this is a TypeScript, TypeScript issue again. And right here we need to specify that the data can be anything, okay? Let's do like this. The data can be anything, so now it doesn't complain about this. Now we find the user, and this should be the whole user. Okay, let's print this whole user. Okay, let's restart this error again. Let's go to the registration page. Create the user. And then login. And right here, we see the... Um, okay. We don't see something. Okay, so we see signature right here. Let's refresh it once again. So what happens? Um, here it is. Okay, so we print a couple of things. So we print first user, and this is the user. And then down below, we print the data, whole data, and this is the whole data. Okay, so let's remove this data. We don't want it. We have it user. And now because we already have the user, uh, we need to now save this user in the application context state. Okay, we have the context state. The state basically is an object and we can put some things in the state. Okay, and I'm going to give it a key current user equals to the user. Okay, and now this current user is available in any uh, in any road. So if I go to the roads, for example, right here on the home page, we have this context right here. And the context state current user will be the user we just implemented and selected and assigned to the current user. Okay, that's like this. So we have this current user, we can take out this const user equals to the current user. And we can actually pass it on the home page and show the name of the currently authorized user. Okay? And I'm going to specify right here user corresponds to current user. Okay? Um, user, excuse me. Just like this. This is the user. And now let's go to the uh, home page, which will be this one. And right here, we can already access the home page. Okay? Now I'm going to print right here the following thing, okay? So let's just print if the user exists, if the user was actually received, and if it's not null, okay, then print user dot name, okay? And let's end the closing tick, okay? So let's save this. Let's again restart the server. And we need to register again. Okay, right here, let's register. login and right here we see the name welcome zura this is the name okay not the username but the name because we are printing a uh, name in the uh, in the view okay awesome now we need to uh, show also logout button okay so we need to write an if statement um, but in this uh, syntax okay in this ejs syntax okay so let's just do like this okay if user doesn't exist okay by the way uh in your case maybe this ejs syntax the vs code cannot understand the ejs syntax okay so you need to go to the extensions and install ejs okay the following ejs language support and now it will give you a correct syntax highlighting and things like that okay if the user doesn't exist we show this login and registration forms uh, buttons, excuse me, right here, 
okay just like this uh, if it exists we need to show the logout button okay if the user exists and let's end right here okay and we're gonna show a paragraph inside the paragraph I'm gonna also show a link to protected page okay slash protected okay click here to see protected page okay and I'm going to also show a link to logout logout this should be a button with a class of btn btn secondary okay so let's have a look what we did so if the user doesn't exist we show login and registration if the user exists we show the link to the protected page and the logout button okay so when we change this home ejs we don't want to actually refresh uh restart the server okay we don't want to restart the server we can refresh it right here and we see this immediately click here to see protected page and logout we haven't implemented any of those so we just need to do this so let's implement the visiting of protected pages first so when i click this i am redirected to the protected page but the thing is that i can actually see this protected page even if i am not authorized okay so if i go to the home page again the server was actually crashed uh, let's open the server and let's implement this protected page okay let's do it so let's go to the server and right here what we actually have remained we need to implement protected and logout okay so we can let's implement logout first because it's easier and then protected page so let's scroll down to the logout section and what we need to do right here is that we need to delete this JW token from the cookie okay context cookies delete JWT okay we delete this from the cookies and redirect user to the home page redirect on the slash okay so whenever this happens basically the cookie is deleted user is redirected to the home page then the user middleware basically won't find this JW token in the cookie and the user won't be available and user will be simply guessed okay and the next thing what we need to do is to implement the protected roads for this I'm going to implement another middleware which will be much simpler okay I'm going to copy and paste this a user middleware and call this one auth middleware okay so the variable will be also called auth middleware okay and what we do right here so let me delete everything almost everything and we need to access the context and the context state current user okay so if in the context the current user exists so we can immediately uh, put this in the if statement if the context state current user doesn't exist we need to immediately do some action okay so we know that the user is out not authorized and the purpose of this out middleware is to authorize to make sure uh, that we are accessing the endpoints when the user is authorized okay so if this happens if uh, the current user doesn't exist we need to redirect user to the login page okay slash login and we don't do anything basically except this otherwise we can just call the next hello user to continue and we need to use now this out middleware in the server right here when we use the protected route okay so i'm going to write this out middleware here as a first argument and we need to obviously import this out middleware from out middleware.ts okay just like this so now this out middleware will be called before protected route and it will check if the user is authorized if it, if the user is not authorized it will redirect to the login page if the user is authorized it will just allow simply to continue okay let's restart the server and have a look okay server is started let's go to the again register page 
create an account hit the enter now we need to register we need to log in so we are actually logged in click here and we see this protected page okay if we go outside and click the logout okay nothing actually happens let's have a look in the inspect and application and jwt so we don't actually see anything right here so the jw token doesn't exist but it seems that the user is still authorized okay so we missed one thing right here in the user middleware okay so if the jwt token doesn't exist right here in the else statement okay we need to set context state current user to be null okay so whenever JW token doesn't exist, this one needs to be now. Okay, and the same thing needs to happen right here if the JW token exists, okay, and the date it, it was invalid right here, we delete this JWT token and right here we just need to um, put this. So let's save this, let's restart the server, let's go to the register page. and let's try to log in okay we are authorized we see the protected page click the log out and i was actually logged out okay so now if i try to access this protected page i am redirected to the login page okay which is awesome now i can actually log in and i'm logged in and now i can see this protected page and basically that's the end of this story okay so we have implemented a lot of things so if you like the video make sure you hit the like button and just share this video okay so sharing helps me a lot to grow and if you find this video useful any portion of this video just make sure to hit the like button and share it and if you are not yet subscribed definitely hit the subscribe and the bell buttons to see videos just like this thanks for watching and see you in the next time cheers